Greetings. My name is Jason Sargent, and I serve as the Director of Testing, Enrollment, and Accountability for the Holmes County Consolidated School District. On behalf of our superintendent, Dr. Deborah Powell, welcome to the 2021-2022 school year. The purpose of this video is to provide you with the information and guidance needed to successfully register your child for school. Please be advised that this video is for parents of existing students only, which means that your child completed the 2020-2021 school year in the Holmes County Consolidated School District and is returning for the 2021-2022 school year. If your child did not complete the 2020-2021 school year with us, please stop this video and watch the video for new student registration. All right, well, if your child is an existing student and is returning to us for the 2021-22 school year, let's get started. All right, online registration for existing, existing students uh, will begin Tuesday, July 27th. Uh, in order to get access to our online registration application, uh, the parent, legal guardian, or custodian must gather all the documents required for registration and take them to the campus where your child will attend school. So registration uh, will take place again this year online. However, in order to get access to the online registration application, you must first physically go to the school uh, where your child will be attending and uh, and submit some required documentation. Uh, if you have children attending multiple schools in the district, for example, if you have a child at William Dean as well as SV Marshall Middle, uh, you will have to go to each school to complete this process. The required documents for registration, uh, first, every parent must show proof of residency uh, to show that you live in the Holmes County Consolidated School District Attendance Zone. So again, all parents must have two proofs of residency. Now we do have uh, a change this year. Uh, the Mississippi Department of Education uh, has given school districts permission um, to not require parents uh, that are returning to the district uh, to submit proof of residency. So what we've decided to do um, in the Holmes County School District is to only require two proof of residency for new students and existing students that are entering the third, sixth, and ninth grade. So if your child is an existing student, which is why you're watching this video, you will only need to submit two proofs of residency to your child's school if your child is entering the third, sixth, or ninth grade. However, there are a few conditions. Uh, in order to uh, not submit the two proofs of residency, your address has not changed, which means you're still living in the same home uh, that you were living in last school year. Also, your child must be returning to the same school. So if your child attended William Dean Elementary School last year, and your child is going back to William Dean Elementary School this year, that means your child is going to the same school. Uh, so if your address has not changed, uh, you will not have to present two proofs of residency. However, if your child um, was at William Dean Elementary School last year, and they're going to be at SV Marshall uh, Middle School for the upcoming year, uh, your child will need to submit two proofs of residency because that means your child is not going back to the same school. They're actually transitioning to a different school. Even though it's in the same district, uh, your child will be in entering into a new school building. Uh, so we do want to update our proofs on file uh, basically every three years in the school district. So again, if your child is going from William Dean to SV Marshall Middle or to from a middle school to a high school, uh, you will be required to provide two proofs of residency. Uh, also, your child must have two proofs on file from the previous year. Uh, so if you provided your proofs to the school last year and they have those proofs uh, in your child's cumulative folder, 
uh, then you will not be required to provide your two proofs of residence, residency for this year. Again, you must meet all three conditions. Your address has not changed from the previous year. Your child is returning to the same school and also your child has uh, two proofs on file from the previous year. If all of that information uh, is in place, uh, then you will not be required to submit two proofs. All right, let's continue. All right, so in the event that you have to submit uh, two proofs of residency, uh, this slide shows you um, the proofs that are required according to our district policy. Um, you would you can use a filed homestead exemption application form. Uh, if you have a mortgage document or a property deed, uh, if you have your lease for your home or your apartment, if you happen to be renting, uh, any utility bills such as a uh, phone bill, um, a gas bill, a electric bill, uh, cell phone bills will not be accepted. Uh, but if you have a landline uh, and you have a, um, a, a phone bill that you could use for utility, um, you can use that. Our driver's license or state issued ID can be used for proof of residency. Uh, please be advised though, a driver's license is required to complete registration even if the address that's on your license does not match where you're currently living. Uh, we must have um, photo ID uh, from the issue by the state of Mississippi to show uh, that you are who you say you are. So we can make sure that we are allowing the child's parent to register them for school. Uh, so please make sure that you bring your driver's license or state issue ID uh, when you come to register. Again, even if the address on your driver's license does not match your current residence, uh, you will still need a driver's license or state issued ID uh, to register your child. Uh, you can use a voter precinct identification card, um, automobile registration or insurance documents to show that that information is coming to your home. Uh, there are affidavits that are available and we'll talk more about the affidavit process in just a minute. And also um, if there's any other documentation uh, that will objectively and unequivocally establish um, that you reside within the school district, uh, we will accept that as well. Of course, um, for that particular category, uh, school personnel may need to contact me uh, in order to get authorization to use any of those other documents that are not listed uh, in our board policy. Now, if you do have uh, the two proofs on file from the previous year and your child is returning to the same school and um, you can use and, and you have not moved uh, then you can use the certificate of residency form and so instead of having to submit the two proofs we will have a form at the school uh, that you will have to complete uh, to certify and verify that your address has not changed and that you're still living um, in the same home so again um, if you're returning to the same school uh, your residency has not changed and your proofs are on file at the school uh, this certificate of residency document uh, will be what you complete uh, in lieu of submitting your two proofs at the school. All right, so let's talk a few minutes about the affidavit. Uh, copies of our affidavits, uh, they can be pulled offline. We will load them on the district website under the registration tab. Uh, we will also post them in, in Active Parent uh, where you can print those off and use those if needed. Uh, we'll also have hard copies at the central office and hard copies at the schools uh, if you need those documents. So let's talk about the uh, shared residency uh, affidavit. The shared residency affidavit um, is designed for the parent or legal guardian of a student residing in a home that's not owned or rented by that parent. So if you have a child that you uh, had in, in Holmes County last year and you had to use the shared residency affidavit, um, you will have to use that affidavit again this year. Uh, shared residency affidavits, all of our affidavits expire uh, at the end of every school year or if you leave the school district. So this is an annual process that has to be done. So if you had, if you um, got an affidavit done last year, that affidavit is, is expired. And so you will have to get another one. And so in order to um, be eligible to use the shared residency affidavit, 
the person that you're living with, uh, the homeowner or the person uh, whose name is on the lease, they must um, be present and provide uh, two proofs of residency to the school. So the person who owns the home or is renting the home, the person that you're living with, uh, they must have two proofs of residency, two proofs from that, that uh, slide we just showed a few minutes ago. And they have to be the person to complete the affidavit. Uh, now, you, the person that's living with them, the parent or the guardian of the child, uh, you have to have at least one proof showing that you live in that home. Uh, that is required. You, you, uh, we cannot register you using a shared residency affidavit if you do not have at least one proof showing that you live in that home. Again, uh, we just talked about all of the uh, approved proofs that are listed in our district policy. Uh, so you have to have at least one of those proofs. If you have a driver's license, a state issued ID, uh, I recommend that before we start registration later this month, uh, that you go and you have your uh, license updated uh, with the address of the of the home that you're living in in the event that you need a shared residency document or you can you know become a registered voter uh, but you must have at least one proof uh, in order to use the shared residency affidavit also uh, we have a non-parental affidavit uh, this affidavit is available uh, for uh, students that are living with an adult other than his or her parent or legal guardian. So for example, if we have a grandmother uh, that's taking care of her grandchild and that child has been living with you uh, for several years or since they've been born, uh, you're not the parent or the legal guardian, your name is not on the birth certificate, uh, but you're taking care of that child for whatever reason and you need to register them for school, uh, then you will need to complete a non-parental affidavit. Now, according to our district policy, uh, we've listed the, the reasons uh, where a non-parental affidavit uh, can be used. Uh, for example, if, um, if there's a death uh, or serious illness uh, for the child's parent or guardian, um, a non-parental affidavit can be used. If the child was abandoned, uh, if there's uh, evidence of child abuse or neglect, uh, in cases where there's an unstable family relationship or undesirable conditions in the home. Also, um, if the student is, is enrolled in a recognized exchange program and they're residing with a host family or if one or both parents are in prison, uh, these are cases where we allow the non-parental affidavit to be used. Uh, but please be advised that uh, shared residency affidavit, non-parental affidavit, Neither one of these documents can be used just to simply establish residency in, in Holmes County. Uh, um, these are just two exceptions and uh, two exemptions that we make uh, to, to work with parents that you know may be living with a family member or if we have a uh, custodian who's taking care of a child uh, that's not legally theirs. Again, copies of this, this form uh, will be posted online in an active parent and you can pick up a hard copy from the central office in the school. So if you need to use an affidavit, uh, you will need to get a copy of our form. Uh, please do not go to a notary and uh, have them type up something. Uh, we have uh, certain information that we need to collect. So please make sure that you use uh, our form in the event that you need to use an affidavit. All right, other required documentation for registration um, is a birth certificate. Uh, if your child is returning, of course, to Holmes County, they should already have a birth certificate on file. However, we have discovered over the past um, several years that we do have students uh, that are missing a birth certificate in their cumulative folder. So what we're asking school personnel to do this year is when parents come up to school uh, to, um, to get access to the registration form, uh, school personnel will check your, cumulative, your child's cumulative folder to make sure that they have a birth certificate on file. Um, also, in, in addition to the birth certificate, every child has to have a certificate of immunization form 121 uh, to show that they have uh, been properly vaccinated. Um, keep in mind that if your child is, is entering the seventh grade, uh, they will need to get the Tdap vaccine. Uh, so please um, go ahead and make an appointment uh, between now and when registration begins. Uh, to have your child uh, vaccinated if they're going to the seventh grade to receive that Tdap shot. 
and uh, and make sure that you get an updated uh, immunization uh, form 121 because you will be required to submit that to the school. All of our seventh graders must have their, vaccine, their immunization form updated uh, prior to registration. Also, if your child's uh, certificate has expired, uh, we do have some students who entered school last year with a temporary uh, immunization form. Uh, if the date on that form has expired or if it's, or if it's missing the appropriate signatures, uh, then you will need to get an updated immunization form for your child. Uh, I do recommend that you give the school a call uh, prior to registration opening for existing students uh, to make sure that your two proofs, your birth certificate and your immunization form is on file. Uh, that would just help the registration process uh, work a lot smoother for you. Uh, so I would check with the school to make sure that all my documents are there before going to the school um, um, to, to start registration. That way you don't have to leave and come back. So please make sure that you get your immunization updated. Uh, this is just a little screenshot of the immunizations that are required in addition to the Tdap. Uh, so please, um, you, know, you can access this information online. We will put a, a copy of this document on uh, our district website under the registration page and we'll also put it uh, in, active, in active parents so that you can see the entire document. So uh, you want to make sure that uh, all of your child's vaccines are up to date and, uh, and that you have a, um, a uh, current uh, Certificate of Immunization Compliance Form 121. Uh, that is required uh, by the state of Mississippi for all of our students that enroll into Mississippi schools. Now, in the event um, that you come up to the school and uh, any of these required documents are missing, your two proofs of residency, the birth certificate, or the immunization form, unfortunately, school personnel will have to stop registration at that time. We will not be able to proceed with registration if you're missing any of those documents. So uh, we're asking that between now and the time of, of, of opening registration that you please um, make sure that your child has a birth certificate on file, the immunization is on file. If you don't have two proofs of our residency on file, please go ahead and get those two proofs and have that information with you when you go to the school. If you have everything in hand, uh, if you've already checked with the school to make sure that they have everything on file, uh, I assure you registration will go a lot quicker and a lot smoother uh, for you because uh, we don't want you going back and forth to the school uh, trying to turn in documents. So please make sure um, um, that you have everything, that you take this opportunity over the next uh, week or so uh, to make sure that all of your documents are on, are on file and that you have everything in your possession uh, for registration. All right, why are you at the school? Uh, there are three surveys um, that you will need to complete. Uh, the first survey is called the McKinney-Vento Eligibility Questionnaire. Uh, this is a questionnaire um, that you've probably completed um, many times, uh, but the state of Mississippi does require us to have parents complete this questionnaire every year. Uh, so this is an annual form that all new students and existing students uh, must have completed and on file in their cumulative folder. Uh, the second survey is called the Home Language Survey. Uh, the only students, uh, parents that have to complete this survey are parents of new students. However, if your child does not have a Home Language Survey on file, uh, school personnel will ask you to complete one um, because we must have a Home Language Survey on file for all of our students. Once you complete the survey, uh, you, you never have to complete that survey again. Uh, however, I do recommend that, you know, once you complete the home language survey, ask the school to give you a copy uh, and keep it somewhere in a safe place at home. Uh, that way, it, you know, when you have to register next year, uh, in the event, for whatever reason, the school doesn't have it on file and you need to resubmit it, uh, you can just give them a copy of the survey that you did the previous year as long as that survey has not changed. But again, the home language survey uh, only has to be completed by parents of new students or if your child does not have one on file. Um, the third and final survey is the migrant survey. Uh, again, again, just like the home language survey, uh, this survey is only completed for new students. However, if your child does not have this survey on file, 
uh, you will need to complete this survey as well. So hopefully uh, your home language survey and the migrant survey is already on file at the school, uh, which means that the McKin McKinney Vento eligibility questionnaire uh, will be the only survey that you will need to be com uh, complete. Uh, last year we did these surveys online because of the, the COVID-19 uh, virus, uh, but we are doing registration in person, uh, so we will have hard copies of these surveys for you to complete uh, at the school. All right, so let's talk about active parent. All right, so once you um, go to the school, all of your required documents in place, you have your two proofs, you have your birth certificate, immunization form, you've worked on your surveys. While you're doing that, um, the person, the school personnel that's getting you registered for school is going to need to update um, your active parent account with a personal active email account. Uh, a few years ago, when we first brought active parent into the district, uh, at that time, we were giving parents a district issued email address. And so we were able to just go ahead and create uh, active parent accounts for all of our parents using the district email address that was that was given to them by the district. Uh, however, uh, we're no longer providing district issued email addresses, uh, which means that school personnel will need to update your active parent account with your own personal active email account. So please make sure that if you do not have an email account, um, go ahead and get you a free account from Google or Yahoo or, or one of these services that provides free emails uh, because you will need an active email account uh, so that we can update your active parent account when you come up for registration. Um, your password for active parent will not change. Uh, if, if for some reason you've forgotten your password, uh, the school person um, that completes registration for you uh, will be able to reset your password. Also, that's why it's important for you to have an active email address in Active Parent. So, in the event that you forget your password, you're able to use the forgot password feature in Active Parent, and um, the system or the program will email you a link so that you can reset your password. They way, that way, you don't have to call the school or you don't have to call me here at the central office to reset, reset the password for you. Uh, so it's critical this year uh, that we get an active email account for you in Active Parent. Uh, school personnel uh, will at that point attach your child to your account for online registration. Now because you are an existing parent, uh, your child is already um, linked to your account. But right now when you log into Active Parent, you can't see them because they're not attached to your um, to the online registration so uh, that's what school personnel will do once they verify that all your documents are in place and you complete all the surveys uh, the last thing that they will do is attach your child to your active parent account uh, so that you can complete registration uh, at that point you'll be able to log in the active parent as usual and um, complete the online registration application uh, of course, our web address for Active Parent has not changed. Um, I've put that on the screen for you. Uh, so when you go to that address, um, make sure that you use your email address that you that you um, are going to give to the school. That will be your username. So whatever username you had in the past, uh, that 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 username will be deleted, and your new username will be the email address that you give to the school. And then the password will not change. The password will be the same unless you ask school personnel um, to reset your password uh, while you're there. And so we're going to pause here and we're going to do a quick demo uh, for Active Parent uh, just to make sure um, that you remember uh, how to log in. And so uh, the neat thing about um, our online registration um, process is that you are able um, to complete registration on any device that has access to the internet so um, you can use a tablet um, you can use a desktop computer your laptop computer or you know if you have a phone a smartphone uh, that has access to the internet you can you know complete registration on your smartphone uh, one thing that we did learn last year about the smartphone uh, that every smartphone is different every smartphone is unique so depending on the kind of uh, smartphone that you have 
uh, will depend what the registration application looks like on your phone and there may be some things that you can or can't do just depending on the kind of smartphone you have so if you have some challenges using your smartphone then I recommend uh, going to the school uh, schools will um, allow parents to use computer labs that have computers set up for you uh, in the event that you need to use a computer for registration or if you're just not a computer savvy person um, you know you can stay at the school and complete registration and someone at the school will assist you or you can go to a friend's house or a local library anywhere where you can get on a desktop or laptop and uh, you shouldn't have any shouldn't have any issues uh, with the online application but uh, you can do it from your phone it just depends on the kind of phone you have uh, how easy accessing that application will be so um, you just put in the, the website uh, which is homes dot active parent dot net which is what I showed you and of course it brings you to the, the Holmes County website so I did get permission from one of our parents here at the central office uh, to use her account and so again you use your email address and then you put in your password and then once you log in this is what you will see you know right now school hasn't started so we haven't started posting any news um, at some point you will not be able to see uh, scheduling grades because we're going to uh, turn off that feature um, so because schools in the process of working on schedules and so uh, we won't turn that feature back on until you know the schools give us notification that schedules are ready um, so when you log in last year you had to click on this little icon right here to get to the online registration application you still can uh, but active parent now has added a tab for student registration so uh, once you go up to the school and your child is attached to your account you'll click on student registration and if you log into active parent now and you clicked on student registration you will get a red message somewhere above this box saying that no students have been attached to your account please enter a code well you don't need to do that um, you're registering a child that's existing which means your child is already in the system so you're not going to be given a code um, this is a section here where it says have a code to enter click here this is only for our parents that have new students to register uh, but again this is the existing students video uh, so your child will be in this drop box and so um, once we attach your child to, to your active parent account you'll see your child's name here and um, you'll be able to click on your child's name and then click on begin registration I'm not going to do that because I don't want this child's personal information uh, to show on the screen but once you click the begin registration then your child's information will show up uh, there'll be another box of course if you remember from last year where you need to go and click on the registration um, uh, application and then click on begin registration again and then the uh, registration application will open up now the good news for our existing parents the good news for you is that all of your information is already pre-populated everything is already in the system from last year so if uh, all you need to do is just go through each tab uh, to make sure that none of your information is changed uh, I strongly encourage you to look at the, the contact information if your phone numbers need to be updated uh, if, if emergency contacts need to be updated please take the time to update that information uh, so that we don't have to contact you later in the year to get that information updated so please take time to go through the application click on each tab look at the information is there make sure it's accurate uh, make changes where changes are needed and uh, and where changes can be made uh, if the box is grayed out that means you can't make those changes uh, if, if it needs to be changed then you need to contact the school or, or, and, uh, and they can go in and make those changes for you uh, of course once you get to the end of the application uh, please make sure that you submit it uh, once you submit the application um, your registration is not complete until the school uh, imports your application and so um, in about once you submit your form in about two or three days go back in and check check your um, your um, application and you'll be able to see whether or not the school has sent it back to you um, which means something was wrong or something was missing but in most cases uh, if the program allows you to submit your application then you should be okay because uh, unlike last year 
uh, you will not be required to upload any documents. You won't have to upload birth certificates or immunization forms. Uh, you're going to submit all of that in person if necessary. So the only thing you have to do in the online registration application is to go through, verify your information, and submit. Uh, so once you do that, um, the reg your registration is complete. Uh, and there's nothing else uh, for you to do but to make sure that your child shows up on the first day of school ready to learn. All right, so let's go back um, to our PowerPoint. And so uh, last thing I want to give you is contact information. Uh, so if you need to contact the school to find out um, if all of your documents are already in place, um, these are the contact numbers. Um, to contact the school personnel, uh, they can check the child's CUM folder to make sure that you have uh, your two proofs on file, birth certificate on file, and an updated um, immunization um, certificate on file. Um, again, if any of that information is missing, uh, do what you need to do uh, to make sure that when registration begins, uh, you have all that information when you come. Uh, if you need to reach out to me, uh, if you have questions or you know any special kind of circumstances that you need to talk through, um, you can reach me, uh, Dr. Jason Sargent, at the central office, and that's the number there at the bottom. Uh, and I'd be happy to assist you or, or answer any, any questions that you have. But any general questions that you have about the registration process, um, you can call the schools, and uh, those individuals that are handling the registration will be able to assist you. All right, again, I want to uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to watch this video. I hope that the information and the guidance that uh, we provided you uh, will assist you with having a very uh, easy and smooth registration. Again, if there's anything I can do for you, just give, us, give me a call here uh, at the central office. Uh, we look forward to seeing you and your children uh, at the start of school. Um, thank you again for watching the video, and uh, have a blessed day.